Hi, and welcome to Candid Conversations. As you can tell, I'm not your regular host for this show. My name is Ruth Townsend, and I will be hosting some of these shows, but Linda will also be back too. Linda means your regular host. So this is essentially a hello from me, and definitely not a goodbye from Linda. She will be back soon to do another show. So welcome to my first show. I'm very pleased to welcome Ford Spaulding to this show as my first guest. And we will be talking today about Ford's involvement with the Minuteman High School. So first of all, Ford, I know a lot of people in Dover know you. You've been involved in the community a great deal. But maybe you can start by telling the viewers a little bit about yourself and your involvement in Dover for those who may not know you. Great. Congratulations. <laughs> I am so excited for you. Thank you. And be able to do this show. And I really thank you very much for having me as your first uh, person on the show. And I'll uh, try to, to make it good. <laughs> thank you. Um, as you know, and a lot of people know, I've been involved in the town for probably 40 years. Uh, my wife and, uh, and I have lived here. We have two children. They both went to Dover Sherburn. Uh, our son and his family still live in Dover. Um, and he actually is involved. He's on the Dover Local School Committee. Um, I've been involved in as a selectman, warrant committee, um, and a whole variety of the other things. The regional school committee, I did that. And I was fortunate enough to work with Libby Yon from Sherburn to be the co-chair of the building committee um, up here at the high school and the middle school. And that sort of drove me to Minuteman because I really enjoyed that experience. Mm -hmm. And when I heard that they were going to do um, a project, I thought, well, this is something else I, I'd like to do. So really, we've been involved in the town. We love this town um, and we'll be here forever. And so what sparked your interest with Minuteman? What made you get more involved with them? Well, I think it, you know, it goes way back to being on the Dover Sherburn Regional School Committee and, and being involved with the school here. Um, we did a couple of searches for superintendents, principals, and some other things, and I just enjoyed that part of it. But I also was involved at one point with a small business association in New England, Spain, and I was chair of it. And through, when I was there, I met a guy by the name of Jack Rennie, and Jack Rennie was the founder and uh, owner of Pacer Industries, which is, I think, of Bill Rucka. It was a defense manufacturing firm, and this is back in 1990. And, and he was upset with the caliber of students that had graduated from our schools and then came to work. And, and he formed a, a group, uh, Mass Business Alliance for Education, which was business men and women uh, who had a similar concern. And because of Espain, I was involved with that. They wrote uh, in 1991, I believe it was, a document called Every Child's a Winner, which became education reform uh, in the Commonwealth back in 1993. And uh, that's where you get your MCAS exams. As my children used to say, I mean, you came up with the MCAS exams? <laughs> no, I didn't. But you know, that's, uh, so it went from there. And then many years later, um, it was around, two, well, it was eight years ago, um, I got a call from a friend who was in Arlington and said, Dover doesn't have a representative on the Minuteman School Committee. Would you like to do it? What's Minuteman? I had no idea what Minuteman was. Well, it was a vocational school and we were in the district. So I went up and met with a superintendent, uh, Dr. Edward McQuillan, and this was really exciting. A career and technical education for students uh, that led to college, it led to all kinds of things. And I thought, I'm interested in this, so I'd like to learn a lot more about it. Plus, they had a 1970s building, they needed a new building project. That's sort of my passion today. Mm -hmm. So that's how I got involved. So what do you think makes Minuteman different from normal high schools? What sets them apart from those high schools? Well, it's just what I said. It's a career and technical school. So our students at Minuteman or any one of the other 41 uh, career and technical schools in the Commonwealth, they have to pass the same academic education requirements that they do at DS. Um, so they not only have to do that, they have to pass the state exams, the MCAST exams, Plus, they have to be certified in a trade that they were interested in. And when they went up to Minuteman as a freshman, they did an exploratory, so they tried all kinds of uh, different programs. They select one, and then they spend the next three years doing that. Um, so 
Minuteman is more than you know just an academic high school. It's everything. It has the same extracurricular activities. They have drama clubs and they have language clubs and they have uh, all kinds of things related to their um, related to what they do. Plus all the sports. You know, at one point, way back when, uh, they were the state champions in basketball. So you know, they do everything. That's great. It sounds like there's such a huge selection there. What? Sorry, go on. Well, I was going to say, those kids are so busy because when you think about it, they're doing the academics, they're doing the career tech, they're doing co-op uh, jobs, plus their extracurricular stuff. It's a lot. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So what type of student do you think fits best into that kind of school? What, yeah. what student is attracted to that? You know, they like to think we want the right student who comes for the right reasons. Um, and that's why there is an admissions process that they go through. And it's not so much what are their academic, what's their academic record in middle school. It's, are they willing to work hard? Are they going to be on time? Just like going to a job, they're going to be on time. They're going to be consistent. So they look at those traits, uh, uh, those traits. But it's also a student who's probably more of a hands-on learner. You know, they sit and think about sitting in a classroom and memorization and all that, and that just doesn't work for them. They want to apply their, their academics to their job. So it's, I would say it's a hands-on type learner. There. So you talked about they have the vocational training in the school, so do they go out to workplaces during the school yeah. year? Usually more in their senior year, but some in their junior year. They find co-op opportunities um, in companies by law, a career and technical vocational school must have an advisory council. That advisory council at Minuteman is made up of over 100 companies. So it's companies around the 495, 128 belt that help with the curriculum. They help design the curriculum within the frameworks given by the Department of Education. So uh, they help design the curriculum and they also offer opportunities for kids to come and work after school. Um, MIT Lincoln Labs, which is right nearby, which as you may know, is, has about 2,000 employees. It's a part of MIT College. They're, most of the, uh, the people that work there are uh, employed by MIT. It's a think tank. They create all kinds of incredible things for NASA, Defense Department, and whatever. We have some students that are co-op students in, in, in there, and they, they go there because it's around the corner. Yeah, that's a great opportunity for them, though. It's a fantastic opportunity. When you think about it, when they put together their application for college, all of that goes a long yeah. way. So talking about opportunities and talking about the college applications, what do the kids from the Minuteman High School go on to do? Where do they usually end up? Well, let me look at it a little differently. Let's talk about, and I have a page here because I just want to do it. Minuteman is, um, as it goes into the new school, which we can talk about, as it goes into the new school, is setting up a career, an academy model of education. So it's going to have two academies. One's going to be the Engineering, Construction, and Trades Academy, and the other is going to be a Life, Science and, uh, Life Sciences and Services Academy. And I'm just going to read some of these that are in the Engineering, Career, and Trades is Electrical, Advanced Manufacturing. Advanced Manufacturing, today's manufacturing plants, they still have the lathe machines, drill presses, all that kind of thing. They're run by computers. So it's teaching, we are te going to be teaching our students how to run these machines. And they may operate two or three machines at a time. Interestingly enough, to equip that one program costs about a million and a half dollars. Wow. Fortunately, the state over the last two years has given us approximately a million dollars to buy equipment for when we move into the, to the new building. And that does all the, the building trades, such as carpentry, plumbing, electrical, so it does all that. Automotive. Automotive is not just changing oil anymore because our cars are smart cars mm. like our televisions. Um, design and visual, visual communications, web development. Robotics and engineering is a big program that, that we have. Um, and multimedia engineering. Multimedia engineering is a new program that we're going to be putting on, and it's going to teach kids about theater. And we're not talking about the acting part of theater. We're talking about the lighting, we're talking about the sound, we're talking about the technology of theater. And we're actually going to be building 
a theater like you might see in Boston, wow. uh, where you're going to be able to lift up um, the curtains and, and props and all that kind of thing. So we're going to be doing that. It's going to teach people about meetings, how to put on a meeting. You know, when Apple puts on their shit, somebody has to put all that together. It's going to teach people how to do that. And of course, television um, and digital filming and, and that. So that's on the, on the, that academy. The other academy being the science and is we have culinary, great culinary department. As a matter of fact, our former head of our culinary was a chef for the Boston Red Sox ownership. And a small fact that I like to throw out, through our carpentry and horticultural department, on the rooftop of Fenway Park, our kids have built a farm. And they're growing vegetables and all that for the kitchens at Fenway Park. That's great. And that was all done. Um, they do have early education, environmental science, a very strong environmental science department, biotechnology, and horticultural. So we have these two academies. Embedded in each academy are the academics. The English are three languages, which is French, Spanish, and, and um, um, no, Latin, thank you. Um, I knew you'd come up with it. Um, and you know the oh, math courses, all that, and they are going to be embedded in each of these academies. So when you're l looking at carpentry and you're looking at geometry, they're going to be applying that. When you're talking about Latin, you're dealing with our health uh, health uh, care programs. That will be, uh, and that's a great way to learn for for some of the students who need to be able to apply it. Yeah. There's a reason why you learn some of these things in your traditional academic school and they're applying it in, in high school. And then you have your humanities, that's all going to be in there, physical education and everything. So that's going to be our new school and that's a really a career in technical education. It's in a lot of the schools, they take different forms. In Dover, we're, I'm rambling on, but in Dover <laughs> we're really lucky. We are part of the Minuteman District. Mm -hmm. We are also, because we're in Norfolk County, we can go to Norfolk Aggie just down the street. Mm -hmm. That has more uh, uh, agricultural and animal uh, type studies. So you, uh, our students can pick and choose either one, and our students go to both. You know, We'll send two to four students to a career and technical school every year. Yeah, so that's, that's really great that they've got that opportunity, so it's a very exactly. much a positive for Dover exactly. that we're still part of that. And then when they've been through these academies and they've taken on the academic learning and the vocational, what are their choices? Is it, is it college? Is it career? Is it a mixture? What kind of things you are the students You hit it. It's gone? everything. 69% <laughs> of our kids who graduate from Minuteman, they've all passed the MCAS exams. They've all met their academic requirements. They've all been licensed or met the standards of their trade. 69% go to four-year colleges. I just heard yesterday, two of our kids with early acceptance into Purdue. That's great. So that's just what I heard yesterday. So, you know, they go to great colleges, UMass, et cetera. Um, about 30% will go on into their trades directly, and they're mainly the building trades. But what is, I've learned is many of them go join the union. Mm. So they might join the carpenters union or the plumbing union. Those unions will pay for their education. And I'm gonna give you examples later of people who graduated <coughs> from Minuteman, went into the union, ended up getting their undergraduate degree and a master's or whatever degree and are in business. So they do that and then the remainder go into the military. Yeah. So it's a great opportunity. Also, many of the kids will graduate already with course credits for college. That's fantastic. And you have a major building project coming up with the new building, so will they get opportunities to learn with that? Oh, bless you. Um, <laughs> Gil Bain, who is our general contractor, um, is going to incorporate opportunities for students to go out into the field and actually do some work you know, within reason but do some work, uh, so yes, they're gonna be able to watch that. On top of that, there's some things we're not gonna finish in the building, mainly outside the building. Um, they're gonna build 
their own. So if you take horticultural, we're going to have a green roof on top. Like at Fenway Park. Like at Fenway Park. They're going to develop that um, at Minuteman. We're going to have some outbuildings for bus storage, etc. The kids are going to do that. So you talked earlier about students that you'd heard about yesterday that are going on to a college and about other success stories that you'd heard about. Can you tell us some of those now? Give us some examples of what students yeah, have done. I have a couple of favorite examples. Um, one, and I haven't told you about this one before, is the student from Lexington that wanted to go to the United States Military Academy. He looked at the curriculum in his high school and said, that's not going to get me there. He went to Minuteman. He went to the United States Military Academy. There's a young lady who I've gotten to know pretty well from Arlington who in the eighth grade decided to go to Minuteman because she wanted to find a cure for Alzheimer's. She went to Minuteman, studied biotechnology, a very bright young lady, did extremely well. She actually was accepted at Stanford and UMass. She's now at UMass for financial reasons. She's a junior there. Uh, she did a co-op job, um, which I actually helped her with, uh, doing research and doing work uh, for Alzheimer's. And she's meeting her dream. Yeah. Or the guy who's on our building committee uh, who graduates as a welder. Went into welding after high school. Ended up joining the union. The, join, uh, the union sent him to Northeastern. He got his undergraduate degree. He got an engineering degree. He has been facilities director for the Lexington schools, facility director for the Cambridge schools, and he's now the facility director for the Wynn Casino. So, <laughs> well, you know, that's a nice step. <laughs> it's a nice step. Now, you know, on the other hand, Chip and I, Chip being my wife, uh, we had an electrician uh, three or four months ago come to our house from Needham graduate from uh, Minuteman. So there's all kinds of opportunities out there for whatever anybody exactly, wants. Exactly, exactly. That's wonderful. And in terms of, you spoke earlier about the money that had to go into this school because of the up-to-date equipment and, and things. So what is the, how, how does the state support it? How does the state feel about these schools? The state treats career and technical schools the same way it treated Chickering Elementary School, or the Dover Sherburn High and Middle School project. Unfortunately, it looks at them all the same way. They will do grants. Um, and in our case, we're going to get receive 40% of our total building costs will come to back to the district to help pay uh, for our $144.9 million building. And that money is going to come by as long as you do everything they require, which is not bad because they're overseeing the project. So it's another set of eyes on our project. Mm -hmm. So we're going to receive, what, 44 or so million dollars from the state uh, to offset our, our costs. Our governor, Charlie Baker, has been a strong supporter, however, of career and technical schools. And when I mentioned earlier, for our advanced manufacturing, we've received about a million dollars. Those are two grants that came out of his administration mm -hmm. for equipment for our advanced manufacturing. It's all about workforce development. Yeah. And when you think about people that work in our factories, what factories we have, when you think about our plumbers, electricians, et cetera, a lot of them are getting older. We need workforce development. We need training. Not everybody's going to be your lawyer. Not everybody's going to be a doctor. Not everybody's going to be in the financial services industry. This is early training for them to move them along to fill all these jobs. That, that sounds really, really good. Yeah. We're going to cut now to a film, which is going to show a little bit more about how the state support these schools and some, hear from some parents in there and some of the students as well. So we'll show that film now for you. Great. Thank you. Massachusetts is a knowledge-based, knowledge-driven economy. We tend to, in Massachusetts, focus on solving the hard problems and finding solutions for the major issues of the day. In order to remain competitive, in order 
uh, to be able to continue to bring some of these innovations and technologies to market to help solve these problems, which is what we love to do here in Massachusetts, vocational technical education is going to be a critical element of that success story. My son has graduated from a career in vocational technical school. He had the same academics as he would have had in a traditional high school, but his competitive advantage that he has is this career focus that he left high school with. He knows exactly what he wants to do. I think that education really needs to come in all different forms because learning comes in all different forms. My son now gets up in the morning on his own. He gets to the bus on his own. He does homework on his own. Those three things alone are things he never did. It gets him here every day. And this is the very first time that he actually has a drive. Well, I've worked with vocational students um, for over 30 years. Two of our uh, most senior employees actually are technical school graduates. Um, so I really appreciate the value that the technical schools provide. My favorite thing about the uh, vocational and technical school um, system here in Massachusetts is the fact that students have the ability to work in the co-op program, which allows uh, students to work in the trade for an employer. They're gaining real-world experience uh, while they're in high school, typically as uh, second semester juniors and seniors. Students get college credit for articulation um, agreements that are granted from colleges because of the programs that we offer and the depth of learning that takes place colleges appreciate that level of knowledge and grant students credit. Another way that students can get college credit is through dual enrollment. Every day instead of coming here I go over to Middlesex Community College and take college classes. Students who have a vocational technical background or training, they're definitely ahead uh, of the game. They're combining technical skills that are absolutely necessary in our 21st century economy with critical thinking and soft skills, which our employers are also looking for. And to have that type of integration is so important in obtaining jobs and being able to uh, hit the ground running, so to speak, in many of the jobs that are available here and puts them at a greater advantage as compared to other students. I'm designing a maple baseball bat. Um, that doesn't um, splinter when the ball hits the weak spot. That's really cool because, I mean, it's something that could actually be put into effect today. We'll go to different streams and test the quality of the water and being able to learn stuff outside and doing it actually in the field as opposed to just hearing about it in the classroom is really great because we're not just sitting at a desk all day. We're going out and we're like experiencing it for ourselves. It gave us a taste of what it was going to be like after we entered the real world and that's why I knew that a technical school was the way for me to go. They really do have what mimics what you find in industry. Like I found even my freshman year of college, I was doing things that I had been exposed to in high school. I didn't realize at the time like how, you know, how unique that was as like a high school program. The recent grant program that the Baker Administration's Workforce Skills Cabinet announced, I think it was about 9.2 million, was very encouraging because it's very strategic and targeted. Ensuring that schools have access to the necessary equipment, but also working with the business community employers and others to ensure that there's appropriate alignment there. If we're going to remain competitive as a commonwealth, if we're going to be able to fill the types of jobs that we need to fill and that our employers require, we're going to have to invest uh, in vocational technical education. Next year I plan to attend college in Michigan. I'm going to go to Hope College and I'll be majoring in engineering. I got accepted to Framingham State. You can come here to take up a trade and earn money, or you can come here to seek a higher education. Both are possible and both are very probable. It is an outstanding education. Students leave high school with a career focus that is true, that, that's really learned and discovered. As the skills that are needed to compete get greater and larger, we need more diversity in how we think and solve and be productive. The state should continue to invest if a strong economy is important to them. It's that simple. A strong economy does not exist without a qualified workforce. We have worked very hard to grow our business and focus on the segment and market segment that we serve. The only thing that's preventing us from growing at the moment is qualified labor and the vocational schools and technical schools are, are key to filling those positions.
That was great to see that film, to hear viewpoints from those people and to see the successes that the students have. Um, so I've found it intriguing. I've found it so interesting to learn about this high school. Um, what can other people do if they want to learn more, either for themselves or their children? I think the one place to start, especially people who have children in the Dover Sherman schools, go to your guidance department. Go to the guidance department and say, this is a school I'm interested in. Is there anything that you can do to help? Also in the eighth grade, um, Minuteman and Dover Sherburn link together and they come together for those students that want to explore more about Minuteman and they can go up there and they do a shadow program for a day. So that's, that's another way to do it. Obviously they can always call, call me, but I think you know through your guidance department or working uh, directly with Minuteman and, and contact them, they, they can help. There are programs that we have. We have um, twice a year a girls in STEM program where we just finished the, our February, during February vacation, we had 35 uh, young girls, eighth grade girls who came in um, and they did a STEM program for five days. Uh, science, technology, engineering, mathematics. Um, and that this is our third year doing it, sold out, sold out all the time. Very great, great experience. And it gives girls the opportunity to experience these types of fields. You know, when I have gone through, um, let's say, MIT Lincoln Labs, and you go through the engineering department, you see mostly males. There are so many great opportunities for females in, in, in that profession. Um, so a uh, STEM program helps. We do a girls in trade program, uh, which um, students from Dover Sherburn can certainly participate if they want. Um, that's really run by Minuteman and, the, and some unions. They have a program this year, I think it's going to be in the next couple of weeks, uh, that's going to take place at Minuteman and out in Holyoke. Uh, so that's another program to learn about these schools. Uh, we are bringing back uh, a program um, this year, and it's going to be in March and April. March, for example, 21, 23, 28, and 30. Dover students in the 6th, 7th, and 8th grade uh, can have the opportunity to go to the, the program. It's an after-school program. You get busing. You can get a bus uh, from the middle school, and they will take you up to the school, deliver you back, uh, and then you spend a couple of hours, and you're in one of 19 different courses um, that uh, students can take, uh, graphic design, digital photography, um, plant science, um, importance of plumbing, build a shed, uh, <laughs> language of Java. There are all kinds of uh, programs that Dover uh, students can do. First come, first serve is in district. I think the cost of that program is $100. Um, and that includes, that's as I said, reasonable. transportation yeah. and everything else. Then they're gonna do it again in April. Uh -huh. So that's, uh, that's, a, a, that's another program. Um, and then there are some other things. Again, if you contact Minuteman, they'll tell you. But um, getting, you know, trying it out and see if it works is great. Dover doesn't send a lot of kids there. They probably won't now. But we have a uh, young lady that's a, I think she's a junior there now. She's in the graphic arts. Um, she just won a huge award for doing a graphic arts thing for, I think, for a company. Um, and she is just loving it. She's thriving up there. So I would say to a Dover parent, or Sherman, or anywhere, this should be another choice that you might want to consider for your children. Mm -hmm. You know, they can go to Dover, Sherburn High. They can go to private schools. A lot of our kids go to boarding or day uh, private schools. But this is another choice, another option. Be it Minuteman, where you're really going to get a lot of engineering, biotechnology, robotics, some of the things I've talked about, or Norfolk Agricultural School. That's, that's another one that is, is a strong consideration for people who are interested in agriculture or interested in animals. Let's say you want to be a veterinarian. Yeah. If you know that now, Norfolk Aggie would be a great place to go. Yeah, so it may not be for everybody, but it's wonderful that it, it Dover has that opportunity, that we should Dover know Sherbin about. have that opportunity. And this town has been so supportive, as you well know. Over the last couple of years, we've had votes about whether we should stay in the region. We've had votes whether we should support the building. Near unanimous votes in our town meetings for Dover, 
for sending our one or two students at a very high cost mm -hmm. that we have to pay for at the town. Uh, but also for the building itself, we did a um, general election in our distri uh, districts mm -hmm. that passed by 70 percent, passed by Dover by over 80 percent. Yeah. Well, so that's it's amazing the support that this town has, and there's a reason for it. They recognize excellence in education, and whether it's for one student or a thousand students, they want to provide options for our kids. That's wonderful. I, thank you so much for coming in today to talk to me about this, Ford. And well, I'm delighted. I'm so delighted that you're doing the show. <laughs> thank you. Um, I the next person that comes on is going to be in for a real treat. <laughs> thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, everybody, for watching. We'll put up some information afterwards about the Minuteman High School if you do want to find out more. Thank you for watching this first show, and I look forward to seeing you again soon. Thank you.